Hi guys, so a few days ago, Lord Frost, the Brexit minister, was in Northern Ireland speaking to an executive committee. He was there to answer questions about the Northern Ireland Protocol. Now, Lord Frost is used to responding to issues raised surrounding the protocol, but generally most politicians avoid the fact that the people of Northern Ireland rejected Brexit and the people of Northern Ireland are generally supportive of the Northern Ireland Protocol. What I mean by this is that many businesses are struggling due to the fact that Many of their suppliers are in Great Britain and Great Britain is now a third country which makes it more difficult to import goods from there. As I said before some businesses have adapted by either finding suppliers in Northern Ireland or in the EU. Remember Northern Ireland is still part of the single market when it comes to goods. So far we've been hearing a lot from the unionist community and their concerns with the protocol even though many of them campaigned for Brexit. Well now we shall hear from the other side. This is Martina Anderson from Sinn Féin, an MLA and a former member of the European Parliament. She had something to say to Lord Frost, which was probably not what he wanted to hear. Um, thank you. Um, you were Britain's chief negotiator for Brexit. Your eyes were wide open and your fingerprints is on every page of the protocol. 63 pages of black and white. And you know that the people here in the North rejected Brexit, the majority of the people. And you also know that the majority of the parties here in this assembly that represents the majority of the people out there on nine, nine separate debates here, that they rejected Brexit, but support the protocol. This is a very important point to be made. And finally, somebody is making this point. The majority of people in Northern Ireland voted against Brexit. The majority of the Assembly, the Northern Ireland, it's like the Northern Ireland Parliament, support the protocol. Now, when we hear unionists and loyalists, we get the impression that it's more like 50-50, but it's not. The majority, as she said here, in nine debates, um, the majority supported the protocol. We only hear generally from the unionist and the loyalist um, community who say that the protocol need to be, needs to be dumped, it needs to be scrapped, thrown in the bin, whatever. They actually don't provide any alternative that they want the protocol scrapped. The protocol being scrapped would be against the will of the people of Northern Ireland. So can I ask you, um, do you not accept that the protocol gives the North access uh, to a single market, cost free, and that the people here in the North who rejected <coughs> Brexit want to see the all Ireland economy, the things that you referred to, the Good Friday Agreement, upheld in all of its parts? Mm. Um, and it's, it just seems to me that you're talking about now balance when surely someone who had their fingerprints on every single page of the protocol, you were the chief negotiator, you were not asleep at the wheel. You knew that there was going to be trade adjustments. The dogs in the street knew that there were going to be trade, trade adjustments, even the DUP. We supported you throughout this Brexit, cheerleaders for Brexit, their reaction to what happened. They knew that there was going to be trade adjustments and they felt you threw them under a bus. So um, I think I would, I would agree with some of what you've said. I wouldn't agree with all of it, uh, which is probably what you, you'd expect. Um, we, um, you know, you're absolutely right. I, I was the, the chief negotiator both in, in 2019 and, and 2020 and um, we agreed the protocol as the 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 best option in a very complex situation the best option in a very complex situation there were, there was another option available there was the option of having the uk as a whole within the single market and the customs union but brexiteers probably speaking to lord frost told him not to accept that you know, businesses in Great Britain would very much like to have access to the single market free of charge. 
but they don't. Businesses in Northern Ireland have access to the single market. They also have access to the GB market. But businesses in Great Britain don't have access, don't have the same access as Northern Ireland does. Now, that was not necessary. It was not a requirement of Brexit. It would was perfectly acceptable, I think, to the, ma the vast majority of Brexiteers if GB and Northern Ireland together were part of the single market in the customs union, but were no longer members of the European Union. But Lord Frost is saying that option was not available, even though it was. We knew that it was, as I said at the start, um, unusual in its construct, um, notably by applying EU laws without any sort of democrat normal democratic scrutiny. And it's very slimy here, very slippery. Any normal democratic uh, procedure. When he said he, he didn't say any democratic, he says any normal. What's happen what happens with the protocol is in 2024, the Assembly in Northern Ireland will get to vote on whether to maintain alliance, the maintain the protocol, basically. Now, it won't be scrapped if they vote no, it will be renegotiated. But it's more and more likely that the Northern Ireland Assembly will continue to support the protocol. We'll say, look, the protocol is what we have. It's reducing the damage of Brexit. It's not eliminating it, of course, but it's reducing some of the damage of Brexit. Uh, let's maintain it. There is a majority at the moment in the Northern Ireland Assembly. If there's an election next year, it's likely that those who are against the protocol will lose seats. Those who want the protocol to, main to be maintained will increase their vote. So the protocol is pr on pretty safe ground. But they will get to vote on it. And that's why we, we had to put the consent mechanism in to ensure that, that that was the case. So, as I said before, we, we knew that a lot had to be worked out. Um, the protocol is a balance. Some of the, its provisions you know, explicitly require detailed um, uh, sort of interpretation and negotiation afterwards and how the uh, the, the boundary between GB and AI work depended on those negotiations. He keeps using the word negotiations. This, this is the second or third time he's used it in speech regarding the protocol. The protocol has not been negotiated. It's been implemented or has not been implemented in, in some cases. But the negotiations are over. The negotiations took place in 2019. There are no more negotiations. Now, Lord Frost likes to continue to give this impression that there are negotiations taking place, but there are none. The EU is saying, this is what you agreed to, implement it. And the UK government's response is, no, we can't. Um, the, it's also a purposive document, where, as I said, you have to read all of the provisions together. You can't take one in isolation. And it's not reasonable to interpret it as a document which simply applies uh, requires an EU external border to be to be established and what are you talking about an EU border being established there's nothing in the protocol that suggests an EU border be established where did you think the EU border was going to go lord frost surely you knew that there was going to be an EU border you did understand that great britain would be outside the single market in the customs union, it would be a third country. Surely you understood that, or maybe I'm misinterpreting something here. The fact that that is what's happening is, is causing uh, um, many of the, the core problems at the moment. So I think it is, you know, the fact that trade diversion was a risk, you're right to say that. Uh, that's exactly why Article 16 is there. And why it's not it wasn't a risk it was a guarantee if you if one country great britain is outside the single market and northern ireland is in the single market then it was a guarantee that there would be a reduction in trade now lord frost is pretending not to know this 
why is he doing that? It wasn't a risk. It was a guarantee. And Article 16 is there to facilitate problems. Of course, there are going to be problems. But if the problems become too great, you invoke Article 16. Isn't it interesting that Lord Frost and Boris Johnson have talked about Article 16, but they've never actually invoked it? So in their eyes, trade to Northern Ireland hasn't been effective hasn't been damaged enough in order to invoke Article 16. But they say the trade has been affected and deeply affected, but not to the stage that is necessary to invoke Article 16, which I find extremely curious. Why trade diversion is, is highlighted as one of the possibilities which justifies the use of Article 16. So, you know, the protocol, um, it's a delicate balance. It, it has to be read in, in, in total. It's very unusual uh, and rests on uh, sort of complex democratic foundations and a lot of it remains to be worked out. And I think the core of the problem is that for various reasons, um, it's not working out in the way that um, it should work if it's to achieve its purpose. And that's why we need to carry on the process of finding a balance so that it does achieve its purpose. I think that's the, the core of the issue here. It's interesting that he didn't actually respond to her principal comment about how the majority of people in Northern Ireland didn't support Brexit, but the majority of people in the assembly, parties in the assembly support the protocol. There was no mention of that. But what is the objective of the protocol? is to protect the Good Friday Agreement, and it's doing that. What is it not doing? Once again, if Boris Johnson or Lord Frost think that trade has been deeply impacted in some particular area because of the protocol, then they can invoke Article 16 to suspend that part of the protocol in order to get, to get over the problem. They haven't done that. Why haven't they done that? Let me know in the comment section, guys, what you think. As always, your comments are greatly appreciated. Thanks a lot. I want to say a big, big thank you to all of my patrons. You ensure that this channel continues to exist. I'm eternally grateful for all of your support. If you join Patreon, you will receive instant access to our Discord server, where we have both audio and video chats. You can chat with me and other patrons, where we discuss important and non-important issues. Becoming a patron per month costs about the same as a large coffee, so why not check it out?